friends, hello, welcome back. Oh yeah, one of the uh, more polarizing guys in the league, if you will. Jean Tortorella has signed and is now the newest coach of the Philadelphia Flyers. Tortorella has been around for a very long time, a former Stanley Cup winner, a man that has coached a lot of really talented players in this league. So today, in today's video, we should say, we are building a team of all players that have played for coach John Tortorella. Now, being that the Flyers are about to be towards this future team or current team, we are including Flyers players on this list. Nonetheless, let's take a look at this team. A pretty solid team, by the way. First line, Artemi Panarin. Yeah, Vinny L. You got Martin St. Louis back in the Tampa Bay days where uh, Tortorella won that Stanley Cup. Then you have Daniel City and Henrik City. Didn't stay long in Vancouver, but he got a chance to coach the Sedin Twins over in Vancouver. Then you go to Patrick Line, a Columbus days. Rick Nash. Oh, yeah, we included Rick Nash, the former Ranger and former Blue Jacket. Did not coach Rick Nash on the Blue Jackets, of course. Then you got Brad Richards. You have Dave Andrichuk, Adam Gray's. I don't know why I always feel like Adam Gray's is a defenseman. Mind you, I do, did not watch hockey when he played, quite frankly. Uh, but still, I don't know what it is. I've always seen Graves, defenseman, great. Something about, did he have a defenseman hot card and then, you know, just messing, not even messing it up? Maybe EA was like, yeah, he's a defenseman. <laughs> I don't think that was the case. Completely our fault. But uh, Matthew Shane, fourth line. You got some centers here. We got, hang on a second. Uh, do we have a better option than Faraby? No offense, Faraby, but I feel like, yeah, we are sitting on some centers. Uh, but Pierre-Luc Dubois? Uh, no, we're gonna leave the ball on the bench. You know what? Let's do it. Fairby's a good bottom six guy on defense. We got Brian Leach, Seth Jones. It's amazing to look back now. Uh, what he, he's really sub, um, excelled, I think, if you all the um, ports, if you want some departments and making some or helping defensemen really flourish. I mean, you remember Jones or Ransky over there at Columbus, and Jones arguably taking a little bit of a step back. Blue Jackets obviously taking a little bit of a step back since leaving there. Uh, Ryan Ellis, Ryan McDonough, Yvon Provorov going to be a future coach player by uh, towards there. You know what? Provorov will be a fun one. He struggled this year, but we know he's a talented player, a heck of a player when he's playing at his best. And I think man, maybe Torts comes over here and has a thing or two to say or help these guys. We'll see. Lundquist, Sergei Bobrovsky, some of the best to ever uh, lace him up in net. Torts has coached him. Here we go, though. We're going to sim up this season. We're going to see if a, a Jean Tortorella a best players coach team can win a Stanley Cup. Now, anything can happen. You guys seen our last video. If you haven't, not a big deal. But if you have, you know that anything can happen in these sims. It was uh, one of the wildest postseasons I've ever seen. Forget about a period in real life or in a video game. I don't think I've ever seen anything else like it. Nonetheless, the Flyers starting the season 6-1, a very solid team. You expected this team to dominate to an extent. I believe they had about a 95 overall with this team. And they're playing, quite frankly, like a 95 overall. I question Flyers fans. All right. What's the thoughts on the, or anybody really, what's the thoughts on signing John Tortorella? Now, I feel like what you often hear around the league and what is the common perception of Tortorella is he gets guys together they start playing hard they play well under him for the first few years and then they start to kind of grow tired of him a few years in and you start to see the teams kind of regress a little bit but at the same time we talk about that and we've seen the way he, the 10 years the teams he's left I, even when he left Tampa Tampa struggled mightily for a couple years after towards left you seen him leave uh, the Rangers you seen him leave the Blue Jackets Blue Jackets struggling right now you wonder how much is the coach and how much is it just the team's direction but again it's hard to get that a uh, hard no style play of hockey throughout the locker room going, especially when you're not winning. So you can definitely see how, you know, that got under the skin of players. But I like it for the Flyers. The Flyers is a team that just, I don't know what happened to them this year. It seemed like it really fell apart, but I really like the core of this team. And I think it's a core that really Bobrovsky, or not Bobrovsky, a core that Torts can potentially work with here. And they're going to get a good pick this year again in the draft. I'm excited to see it. I, they're obviously an interdivision rival here for the Blue Jackets. But then again, did the Flyers ever win in Columbus? Who am I kidding? It's been a while since I watched some hockey. But the Flyers used to have this problem with winning in Columbus. 
It was like, what, 13 straight games or something crazy like that. That balances out, though. That's just hot. That's sports in general, where you kind of go on a big streak like that, and then all of a sudden they win 10 straight or something. But it was kind of cool at the time when it happened. The Flyers right now, though, just absolutely running through the NHL. They're going to drop 60 wins on the season. They're going to get the New Jersey Devils in the first round. Talk about some uh, close-distance rivals there. Devils, Flyers, Devils having a good season as well. We'll take a look at these points here. Brad Richards led all players on the Flyers with 76 points. Uh, 123, not bad, not bad. Nobody else in the division top 93. So it looks like on paper, Flyers got themselves a pretty easy path to the conference finals. But again, anything can happen once you get the playoffs. On paper though, looking favorable. As far as the Eastern Conference goes, they did finish in first place. Bruins, Lightning, and again, the Leafs, as you expect, it's going to be really tough. Western Conference, 111, 110, 106. Canucks! I didn't say we took their players, but the Sedins have not played on the Canucks for quite some time. Oilers, Flames, Avs up there as well. Stars, Blackhawks, Blues, and the Sharks. Sharks are a little bit of an 80 point, 88 point season. Let's see if they can do with that. As far as the Flyers are concerned, 76 points, 75 out of Sedin, 68 out of Martin St. Louis. A little bit, honestly, a little bit of a low seat. When you consider, yeah, had St. Louis, Le Cavalier, and Panarin, all in one line. I mean, clearly they dominated teams, plus 28, plus 31, plus 30. I kind of expected a point per game out of those guys. Surprising we didn't see that really there. 46 goals, 17 assists for Rick Nash. Uh, Emerson gaudy numbers, if you will, from a goal scoring department. There are 17 assists. He's doing a lot of goal scoring. Not a whole lot of passing. It's all right, though. 44 and 15 for Lundqvist. 925 save Bob. 930. These two goaltenders played outstanding in net. Seen some good defensive hockey. And the goaltenders clearly played a big part of this team winning games this season. Here we go. Postseason Devils. First round. Uh, looks like they have a winning game number one. We're going to get... I, I am just saying New Jersey, no disrespect, but I think we're going to get the brooms out on this one. So we're just going to get all four games out of the way. And, oh, Devil's going to hang in there in overtime. Game three, four. Going to lose game five, though. I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. I was saying it is currently Tuesday. I was saying on Monday or Sunday after the Tampa Bay Lightning got absolutely stomped on. Stomped on by the Avalanche. I was talking like, you know, yeah, it's great and all to get that kind of high scoring game but at the same time you know there's almost like this fine line where if you run the score up too much all you're going to do is light a fire under the butts of the opposing team and i was saying it if the colorado avalanche did not sweep the tampa bay lightning the lightning were going to come back from that series after that game and win the stanley cup we'll see if it happens it's currently i believe 2-1 colorado as we speak nonetheless here we go washington Game one, dub. Game two, dub. Game three, going to lose that one. Eight are not a fan of winning game four. That's all right. Going to win the other five. Here we go. Conference finals coming up. The, again, we expected a potential walk, cakewalk to the finals or conference finals. Here we go. The Bruins got to be a tough team to play. Going to win game one, two, one. Here we go. Game two, going to win game two. So far, nothing seeming too difficult for the Philadelphia Flyers. The Brooms are out once more. Conference finals done. Stanley Cup against the Colorado Avalanche. A tough team to play. They're going to win game one, 5 one, 6 one. They're going to win game two, 4 one. Philly is just running through the NHL playoffs right now. And again, a loaded team. Two nasty goaltenders in net. 3 nothing early. Graves, Lecavier and Graves again. I did think there was cracks in this team. I, I didn't feel like it was like this all 90 plus team where it's like, oh, okay, they're going to just run through everybody. I thought there was a chance. But clearly, these guys are just playing really well together. Ranton going to get one in on Lundquist. And it helps your goaltenders dropping at 930 on the season, not to mention. Man, Will, what a season that was by Lundquist. In a, se in a game like this, we've always talked about, it doesn't really matter how the team looks. It seems like it's so average. 907, 908, 910, 900. Even if your team wins 60 games. But to see Lundquist go out there and drop at 930. Miko Ranton on Lundquist, nothing doing. You've seen... Uh, Locking in on Lundqvist to get in the slot. Nothing doing. Line going to get one on that on Darcy Kemper. Raw Colorado trying to fight back into this one. We are moving at X1 speed. I was wondering why there was no shots. We was getting a little distracted there. Ivan Provorov trying to get things going for these flyers. Nothing doing. Kemper playing good, keeping this team in the game. Colorado power play, and it's going to come up empty-handed. Philadelphia all over 
uh, Darcy or Lundquist right there or the Colorado Avalanche. Lundquist making a save. 4-1 Flyers. It has been all Flyers in this period and it has been all Flyers in the postseason. The Flyers are going to win the Stanley Cup. A team of all torts coach players can indeed get the job done. It looks like they're not bringing home any hardware. Oh, Con Smythe went to St. Louis. Lundquist got the best. No, what kind of thing was that? Of course, Lundquist is winning that Vezina. He just dominated the league. Lundquist finally getting that Stanley Cup, by the way. Franklin Jay going to Bergeron McKin Mc McKinnon. McKin McDavid still almost said McKinnon. The Ted Lindsay Maurice Richard going to Ovechkin. That is going to wrap things up for this video, though, guys. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you consider subscribing, liking the video. You never have to. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.